Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be talking about what to do before you get chicks. Now you can see I got my nice little chicks set up. I get my Cornish chicks tomorrow. I'm getting about 15 of them. I was going to do 25, but I also have that 25 coming. You can see I have my little helper today. Little Journey. She's helping today. So, But what to do before you get chicks. Before you get chicks, make sure you have the proper setup. That is the most important thing. Make sure everything works. Make sure your heat lamps work, you have extra bulbs, you have good shavings. She likes to be involved. She, she's a barn cat. She just loves she, everything I'm doing, she's doing. She walks around and helps me with chores. But before you get checks, just make sure you have good shavings. Now, a lot of people have a controversy against to use shavings or you could also use newspaper shreds or uh, you could use puppy pads. You can use a bunch of different things for chicks. Um, I use the mini flake shavings, as you can see. Blip, they just blip. Mini flake shavings. Um, you can use those, or you can use a large flake. A lot of people use a large flake. Yeah, go get it, Journey. Yeah, she's checking it out. She's making sure it's up to standards. She's good with chicks. She doesn't bother my chicks at all. She's just, she's just curious. That's another thing you wanna make sure is you can't let cats get chicks. Just cats will eat chicks. She won't, but she's just, making sure it's up to qualification, up to code. But you want to make sure that you have the proper bedding. You want to make sure it's warm. Chicks temperature, what it should be as the hottest in their pen, it should be about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 95.5 if you want to be exact. It should be about that as the hottest spot. Now in the coolest spot, you want to make sure that your chicks can get away from the heat. So if they do get too hot, you want to make sure, as you can see, my cage is all open. So it's all open and there's only one spot, one heat lamp to where they can get warm. So they can get warm and if they get too cold, they can go back under the lamp or if they get too hot, they can kind of come away from it. And you, usually I put a board on the back of it, but it's been about 85 degrees here outside. So I'm not gonna put a board, but I will just to keep a draft. You wanna make sure that they're draft free too. But my chicks are kind of, the way this is set up is it's kind of already in a corner. So there's not a lot of drafts that come through here, but you wanna make sure that they're draft free. Um, if you have them like in a garage or in a different place, you want to just make sure that they don't have a draft. Now for water, depending on your water type, I have a really soft water. or not, It's a really nice clear water. It gets purified. It goes through a purifier and everything like that. But if you have a hard water, you're going to want to get a chick starter. It's a little, it comes in a little bottle. I don't have any because I don't use it because I don't have to. But if you have a hard water in your barn or if they're out in the barn, you want to make sure they sell it at almost all uh, farm supply stores, uh, feed stores, and feed grain, all those kinds of stores. Big R, Farm and Fleet, Rural King, they all have it. Um, that's just a couple of them that I know. But it comes in a little bottle about this big, and it'll say um, Chick Water Starter. It just it softens the water, makes it easier. It's kind of like an antibiotic for them. Uh, that's just to kind of get them used to the water. But I have a really nice water. I use, uh, it's a, it's a, it's, this is an old water, but it's a little giant water. It, I'm gonna clean it out a little bit more before I get them. They come tomorrow. So I just wanted to go over everything on before you start get chicks. But I just have a little water. It's a little uh, half gallon water. It works great. Uh, you can get, depending on your size, like I said, I'm probably getting about, I'm getting about 15 tomorrow. So that's, that's a decent size water for 15, or you can get the small ones. I have some small ones. I don't, they're not right over here and I can't walk because of my leg, but you can get those two, they work really well. Um, typically I do a brighter color like red, green, or yellow, purple, uh, just kind of a more vibrant color so they recognize green or red with water, or blue, blues, a lot of people like blue. But, and then another thing is feeders. I'm gonna try to grab this feeder right here. This is, Almost all feed stores have these. They're really nice to have. You can either get the metal ones. This is a metal one. They just slide so you can put the feed in and then close it back up. These work really well. You could also get the gravity feeders. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll get out of the way. This is a gravity feeder. Um, it's a little, it's a baby hog feeder. You can get them also at all your feed supply stores. Uh, they, I use those for when they get about two weeks, once they start, because they'll start throwing, once they get about two weeks old, they'll start throwing shavings in here. That's the only problem I face, and they'll start throwing shavings in their feeder and trashing it and just scratching it because they're starting to learn to forage, and they want to forage for their grain. Throw that back in there. <laughs> but you see I have the heat lamp on. Um, I'm just making sure it's all working, everything's right, the temperature's right. I have a, I'm going to put a thermometer under there pretty soon. Ma'am, 
you have to do that right here? Hey. Hi, Jern. She's like, oh, hello. But don't mind her. Hey, hey. You have to do that right now. She's, she's a little lover. But temperature is a biggie. Can you stop? Go, go away. Go on, go on. Go do that somewhere else. We don't need to see that business. But you want to make sure temperature is accurate. They can get away from the heat and out of the heat if they do get too hot. When they are, when chicks are cold, you'll see them grouped together underneath the heat lamp or underneath the warmest spot. You'll see them grouped together. Now, if they're too hot, you'll see them spaced out. Like they'll all be like as far away from the heat as possible, pushed like all spread out. But if the temperature is just right, you'll see them. You'll see some under the heat lamp, some of them away by the feed, some of them by the water. You'll see them all kind of scattered out, but they'll be grouped together more. Um, there's a lot of pictures. Just look up um, how to tell if your chick's too hot, and you'll see a diagram of it showing you where the chick, the chick's movement and how they look. So that look that up. You can look it up on anything Google, Safari, whatever you have on your phone or computer or whatever you have. Um, we're going to discuss water. Um, like I said, the hard water. But you want to make sure that your water is not by the heat, because if it is by the heat and they are cold, they will go in the water. They'll lay in the water. If your water is like right under, everybody likes to say, "Oh, warm water is better for them." Uh, it's just water. It's I mean, you don't want it hot. I mean, if it's winter, then you could probably consider warmer water. But other than that, you don't really want warm water. But like, it just depends. Like, I don't really uh, mess with warm, cold water. But you want to make sure it's away from the heat. You want to make sure it's like by the heat lamp, so they don't have to like leave the heat too much. You can see the red circle, the deep red circle that I have. It's like almost orange. It looks yellow on the camera. But that's like where the direct heat is, and you can see my, you can probably see it a little bit better if I go in it. But you can see that it's a decent ways away from it. But you just want to make sure that your water is not next in your heat, because if they do get cold and they pile, they will go in that water and they'll get hypothermia, because their body will be wet and they'll be warm, so they'll get hypothermia. So you want to be very, very careful of that. Chick feed. What you can get... Everybody uses different things. Do what works for you. I use uh, Agrimaster Chick Starter. I'll show you. This is what it is. Yeah, it's just that. It's pretty basic. Any Neutrogena works. Everybody has their own kind of feed that they want to use and what they think is better. Um, that's just what works for me. Uh, it's Agrimaster Chick Starter 17%. Now, if you're raising Cornish like I do, do not raise them on meat producer. Do not start them on chick feed. And then you can either have them on chick feed for their whole life, or you could have them on uh, layer feed their whole life, well, until you, their processing time. But do not raise Cornish on meat producer, even though it's made for meat producer and meat producing birds. Um, Cornish grow extremely fast, and they grow, they'll get, grow too much, and their legs will give out, and they'll have heart attacks and all kinds of problems. But you want to make sure, we're gonna, another thing we're going to talk about is uh, predators and how to keep predators out. You can see that this is just, it's a little box and whatnot, and it's screwed down to a pallet, a closed pallet. You can kind of see my leg, but it's screwed down to a closed pallet. So if I were to move it, you see it's not moving. It's not sliding. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you just death staring everything? <laughs> She's just intense staring. But um, you want to make sure that nothing can move your coop. You want to make sure your chicks are safe. As you can see, I use a really, really uh, thin wire. I'll try to zoom up on this. There we go. Um, it's a really thin wire. I can't even get my finger through it. Well, I can kind of get my finger through. But this is uh, cage wire, floor wire. That works. It works really well for chicks. Uh, they can't get out, so you, you could probably raise quail chicks in here. But you want to make sure that a cat or a raccoon or any kind of animal can't get their paw through because we used to use a different kind of wire. It was cage wire but it was a little bit thicker it was half inch I believe it was a half inch or inch I think it was it was probably inch I think but we had uh, we have feral cats to come around here because we live in the middle of the country and there's feral cats but they'll come through and they'll grab the chicks and they'll pull them through the wire and they'll just rip them apart and kill them so you want to make sure that nothing can get your chicks nothing can ever get them and then another thing is we want to make sure your heat lamp is safe because everybody don't use heat lamps because they'll catch on fire. Make sure they are safe. As you can see, my heat lamps way up is uh, has plenty of space. I also, uh, sorry, I'm like crippled right now, but you can see my heat lamp is in the wire. It's wired down to it, so it can't fall off. 
you can see this thing don't move. It's, it's stable. It's not gonna fall off and catch on fire. So you wanna make sure of that. That's another reason why I don't like using newspaper clippings is because if it does fall, newspaper is, it's paper. It'll catch on fire very, fairly easily. Shavings don't catch on fire as easily. Uh, they will burn, but they won't burn as easily as say straw or hay. Uh, you can use straw for chicks. I don't recommend it. Uh, I just don't like straw for chicks because it's, it's a lot bigger and it uh, holds a lot more moisture. So it makes it wet. Shavings kind of, kind of absorbs it. They, it absorbs it, but straw is just, it kind of, it'll just lay on top of it. It won't go into it to where sawdust will. But a lot of people have issues with chicks eating sawdust. That is when you get the big flake. You can eat, I get the mini flake because it's easier to clean. And um, I've never had a problem with it. Uh, when we did guineas, uh, they had problems with shavings, but we switched them to big flake shavings. And then we also did uh, pine shavings. Um, be very careful with pine shavings because if chicks do eat it, uh, they can die from it if they eat too much of shavings. So that's the thing with mini flakes is you want to be really careful with that. I use it because it works for me. I've never had a problem with it. Um, as long as you start your chicks on uh, shavings, they won't really mess with them. As long as they can see their food and their food's not buried in their shavings or they don't have shavings all in their feeder, they should be fine. But just watch out for that because a lot. Of, I have had a lot of people uh, say, oh, that doesn't work well or I've had my chicks eat it. Uh, just do what works for you. Paper shreds work well, work good as well, or puppy pads. Uh, I don't like puppy pads. I just don't use them because I, it's just, it holds it in and you can see how much of a mess it is. For shavings, it takes a while before they can trash them. And then if, say, if the water were to spill, or if they were to dump it, or if I were to accidentally spill it, uh, the shavings soak it right up and it, ke it keeps it dry on the top, but wet on the bottom. But I usually clean my, depending on how many chicks are in here, I usually clean this once a week. Uh, I did 10 chicks in here last time and I cleaned it uh, every two weeks because it just wasn't bad. Um, but then once they start getting bigger, they're out. The chicken tractor now, my other Cornish and my uh, this year's hatch for my pullets. So they're out in the chicken tractor right now, but then I had to clean it every three days because it was getting really bad. You guys have probably seen some of my videos where it does get really, it was really bad at that time, but I cleaned it and I got it all cleaned out now. You wanna make sure uh, it's, you have, if you do chicks in a previous time, make sure it's clean. Uh, strip the whole st stall or coop or cage or brooder, whatever you use, just strip the whole thing, let it air out for a couple days, put a fan on it or just uh, put it outside and just let it air out and just kind of acclimate back to the original, uh, like your area. Uh, don't, I've had bad luck with bleach. People bleach their stuff. Uh, you can do that, but uh, I don't do it because I have had a whole batch of guineas die. I, we had uh, 120 guinea chicks and we lost half of them because we bleached it. So we don't bleach here anymore. Uh, we don't bleach rabbit cages. We don't bleach anything here. Nothing gets bleached because of that, because we have had animals die from it. After we bleached it, we're like, oh, it's clean. They should be fine. And then something happens and they die. But so you got the heat, you want it about 95 degrees at the hottest, and then at the coldest, I would probably say about 70 to 75 under a couple weeks. Uh, just so they can get out of the heat, but they can also get in the heat, you wanna make sure that they're comfortable. Uh, like I said, look up a couple pictures, they have diagrams on there of that. But feed, we got the feed covered. Uh, you can do the VetRx stuff if you're really nervous about your water. Uh, they sell it, it's just, it just comes in a little bottle. Uh, it, I think it's only like five bucks. I think it is for and I think you put two drops per gallon So it lasts a long time you can get that or you can also get the probiotics They also sell them. It's like a little mineral you put in their water to start it I don't use it because we have really good water here uh, really clean water It goes through a purifier and everything like that But different places uh, if you have a lot of iron or copper or other kind of stuff in your water, you don't want that but I think that's really it is just make sure that you have good wire, nothing can get in, nothing can move your cage, make sure you have a top on it. I have a top on mine. You can see, it's a nice little brooder. It's, um, I don't know the dimensions off the top of my head. I would probably say it's three by three, or three and a half by three and a half. It's around there somewhere. But I got, you wanna make sure the water's not in the light. That's probably the biggest one, is keep the water away from the heat, but make sure it's close enough so that if they are cold that they can get a drink and then go right back to the heat. Uh, feeders, I have two feeders in mine. Uh, you can either, like I said, you can either use the big, the metal one, that's kind of ugly face, 
but you can either use, I use a plastic one, I use a couple different brands, I wanted it to match. I tried to look for the same, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> stretching, but I tried to use the same brand to make a match, but they didn't have uh, the other red plastic one. The only thing with the, I don't like the plastic ones because they break a lot easier. But uh, the metal ones I've always had good luck with. I haven't had them break. The only problem is when they bend, then it's they're they're like not hard to bend back. So I like the metal ones preferably, but it's really your choice. Just do what works for you. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. But you can either use the gravity feeders; those work really well, or I use those just because there's more space for them, so they all don't pile on top of the feeder. If you have a gravity feeder, there's only so much room in that little circle. But these are nice and long, so you could probably get, you could have like 10, 15 chicks eating at once. Well, I could probably have like 20 chicks eating at once. But those work really well, and then they can't really, they can't really get in it and scratch it out if they were to. So that's kind of really it for the video today. I just want to talk on what to do, what to do before you get chicks. Just make sure you have everything. You have spare bulbs, you have everything. Uh, I've had a good luck with the red light. A lot of people use uh, the clear light or the other heat lamp. I, I like the red one just because uh, they associate, they can see the red and they associate heat with red equals heat. Uh, you can use either or. Either one works. It doesn't really matter. Just do what works for you. So that's really it on to va today's video. Just going over on what to do before you get chicks. Make sure you have everything set up. You have the food. You have the water. You have the feeders because you don't want to get chicks and last minute going to set something up really temporarily and then having your chicks die because of something you missed. So this is just a quick video on it it's uh it's really informal you just want to make sure you don't have your stuff dying journey here <laughs> journey here is actually a really good cat with birds uh we raised her around uh guineas and chicks and everything she was born actually in the brooding stall which we have one of our horse stalls we used to use for guinea keats uh we had uh like i said 120 of them and their, her mama actually had them in the stall so they were born with the chicks and they kind of got used to chicks and everything else. They got used to the birds and rabbits. So I've never had these cats kill a single thing. Never, never ever had a problem with them. They just avoid them and kind of stay clear of them. So, but that's it on the video today. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget, to, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm getting chicks tomorrow, so I'll, I'll send a video to you. I'll, uh, I'll make a video on my chicks tomorrow. I'm getting some Cornish, so I'm really happy and really excited about it. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day.